with joy what you said to us today. Amen. Amen. Luke 11, 1 through 13. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us. And lead us not into temptation. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I always like how the ending of this, of this scripture goes. If you then who are evil know how to good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Amen. I mean, because who really would give a scorpion to someone who asked for an egg? Um, uh, or give him a snake instead of a fish? I mean, sometimes you get surprised by a snake at the end of, on your fishing lure, right? <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> so today we're talking about prayer. Now, prayer is one of those things that we either feel like we're really good at or we feel inadequate at it. And everybody goes through those moments where we don't always know what to say when we pray. We don't always feel like our prayers are going up to heaven. Sometimes it doesn't feel like it goes past the shingles on the roof. But, but rest assured that God hears every prayer. It may not be the prayer that we pray from our lips, but it's the prayer that our spirit is communicating with him. So, some things to think about with prayer. <clears throat> um, Martin Luther says that he has so much to do. So, this is in the uh, 16th century. Uh, the Martin Luther said, I have so much to do that I shall spend the first three hours of the day in prayer. I see all heading, head nodding has stopped. <laughs> Could we spend three hours at the beginning of our work day in prayer? Why would Martin Luther do that? Because he knew that he was going to that he was going to face a lot of different situations that day, and he needed God's spirit and His presence to guide him. And he was going to spend the time with God at the beginning of the day, at the beginning of the work day, to make sure that his mind was focused on the Spirit and on God's Word that would be with him always throughout the day. And it wasn't just a 911 call to God whenever you came across a situation that, that you would encounter. Corey Tinboom says this, and, and, and I like this quote, Is prayer your steering wheel or is it your spare tire? And that goes along with Martin Luther's quote. Do we allow prayer to really guide us? Or it, truthfully, is it there just when we need it? You know, as, as Christians, I mean, we can read the letters of Paul where, where he says that we need to pray without ceasing. Now, that does not always mean that, that we have to just keep our eyes closed and don't talk to anyone else. And it doesn't always mean that we have to begin the prayer in a formal way like Father in Heaven or, or Gracious God, Almighty God, however you start your prayers. And it doesn't mean that we have to end our prayers in, 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 a, in a formal way. 
The point is to have our spirit and our mind and our entire being communicating with God each and every day because we never know where he will speak to us, where his word will touch our heart. Because the scripture says, ask and you will receive. Knock and the door will be opened to you. Seek and you will find. And a lot of times what happens is we will have people, we, we will hear people, and they will say things like, you have to make sure you have enough faith. If, if God's not answering your prayer, it means that you don't have enough faith. But see, what Jesus is talking about, when you pray for things in his name, you are praying for things in agreement with God's will. So we are aligning our lives and our heart with God who is speaking to us. We're not allowing our selfish motives to try to persuade God. We don't gather people to, to try to get us, to get him to do what we want him to do. We gather people together so our hearts are collected together and united in prayer. So when we hear an answer, we understand that God has been with us always. And we have been aligned individually and as a community together to the will of God. Now Jesus gives a prayer that, that we call the Lord's Prayer. The reason we call it the Lord's Prayer is because this is the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. This is the only time in Scripture that the disciples asked Jesus to teach them anything. They would ask him what stuff means, but he was saying, Lord, they said, teach us how to pray. And Jesus said, okay, do this. But here's a question we have for us posed that is right now. When's the last time we asked someone to teach us how to pray? When's the last time we sat with another person and said, let's hear from God so he can teach us how to pray? See, the heart of the disciple is always being disciplined to be formed into the image of Christ. And sometimes we have made prayer so private and so personal that we don't always like it when someone says, are you sure you're praying God's will? You might be praying for something. Another person might be praying for something opposite. There are times where we're like, God, please make it stop raining. And the farmers are like, God, thank you for the rain. Keep it coming right now. Not too much. Which prayer will God answer? So we have to make sure that we are in line with what God is speaking. And that, that's why Jesus begins this prayer. He teaches the disciples in this manner. He, he, he says, Father... Hallowed be your name. And, and the way that we do it, and the way we have come to know the Lord's Prayer is we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Now think about that. Jesus, right off the bat, is, is telling us we can talk to God in a personal manner. That he is so personal, we can call him Daddy. We can call him Abba. We can call him Father. We can come to him because he desires to be made known to us personally. He desires for us to know him personally. Christianity is the only religion in the world where God desires to be known personally by his people. And he wants his people to understand who they are. We don't have to figure out God's will. We don't have to figure out who God is because he desires to be so personal with us that we are shaped into his image. That we are doing his will in the world. And then we say, our Father who art in heaven, who art in heaven, is God here with us? Yes, but he reigns on high. We don't pray to little uh, deities or to idols or to objects that we speak, that, that we keep on our shelves, that, that were handmade. No, we're praying to a God that is so transcendent, which means above everything. We're praying to a God that is so powerful that we remember that his place is so far above us. Yet he desires to be known to us here and now. Amen. And we don't ever take God's name lightly or in vain. Amen. So we say, hallowed be your name. I'm going to revere your name, Lord God. I'm, gonna not, I'm, I'm not going to use your name in a way where, where it makes it lose significance to my life or to the people around us. But a personal God who is so 
far above everything has come down to meet with us so we know him. And we give reverence to his name. That's how Jesus says to begin with prayer. He says, pray to, pray to God like you know he's right there with you. Amen. Pray to God like you know he is so far above everything that you can't get him to do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And he's not this little idol on a shelf. But he's still right here with you even if you can't see him with your eyes. But pray to God also in a way where we are reverent to him. Or make sure we do not take his name lightly or use it in any way whatsoever in form in, or any form that will cause his name to be of no significance. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is what God's will is in, in our life, in our world. For his kingdom to be known and shown in all its glory here on earth as it is in heaven. So we always pray for God's will to be done. One of the hardest things to do as a pastor is to go into a hospital room on someone who is really sick and, 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 and pray for Pray for healing. What if that person is not healed physically in that moment? Does that mean that God did not answer the prayer? Oh. No. God brings us all to a place of healing and wholeness. We just have to understand that we don't always understand his will. We don't always understand his ways. Because his ways and thoughts are higher than our ways and our thoughts. But we still pray for God to bring healing and wholeness, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, relationally, if there's any broken relationships with anyone, and spiritually, making sure that people are in line with him through their spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus is, is, is saying, pray for us to have the strength to make this earth right here and now look like heaven. Give us the strength to do whatever it takes so people can see and experience the kingdom of heaven here and now because the reality is the kingdom of heaven is here and now and in the life to come. It's a both and situation. Now we get to the next line. Give us today our daily bread. Now this, this goes back to Moses and, and the Israelites in, in Egypt where they were wandering in the desert and they started complaining because they didn't have anything to do. You notice people complain whenever they get hungry or am I the only one that's noticed that? Yeah. <laughs> people complain when they don't have a physical need or urge to, to, uh, to, uh, when, when, when it's not being met. But he said, give us today our daily bread, which means, God, we are praying for everything that we need today. He's not going to give us the strength for tomorrow. He's not going to give us a savings account so we can live tomorrow. He's going to give us everything we need today. Gracious God, give us the word that you can speak to our heart today as our food for our spiritual life. So we are encouraged to be your people in this world. We ask for God to give us everything we need today because as James says, tomorrow is not promised. But we always say, if it is the Lord's will. So we always ask for God to give us what we need today and then we thank God for what he has given us today in order to do his will and work today. Now this line in here that gets really tricky for us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Now what's interesting is that we use the term trespassing. Now that is very significant 
Because trespassing means that you are going into an area, into land, in, 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 into this uh, place that you don't belong, that you were there illegally. That is what sin is. We are in an illegal place when we live and go and, 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 and fill the desires of sin. That's why, God's, that's why we pray, forgive us our trespasses. Forgive us. From going into areas that we don't belong. Forgive us for doing things that we don't need to do. Forgive us for going against you. And then, and then the line comes in. As we forgive everyone else who trespasses or sins against us. That line should be like a dagger straight to our heart. Because we're asking God to forgive us. With the same amount of forgiveness that we offer to other people. Let me say that again. <laughs> We're asking God to forgive us with the same amount of forgiveness that we offer to other people. If we don't forgive others, Jesus is saying that uh, he won't forgive you. That should sting. <laughs> Forgive us. Help us to forgive those who have wronged us. Help us to understand what it means to live a life in peace. As we have forgiven those other people. Why would we do that? It's not a big deal. It's just Jesus did it for us, right? Think of what all humanity did to Jesus while he was alive, during his uh, crucifixion and flogging. During his, think of what humanity does to Jesus today. Amen. Amen. And yet on the cross, Jesus still said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. God's forgiveness is wide and abundant and plentiful and merciful and, and, and all available for us. But Jesus is reminding us we have to forgive and we have to, I'm sorry, we have to seek the forgiveness that we offer to other people. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. See, right then and there, we are, we are now we're telling God, look, God, you're, you're providing all of this stuff for us. We're seeking for your forgiveness as we have forgiven other people. Now we're saying, God, lead us. Lead us. God, you be, the, you be the captain of our life. You guide and steer everything. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a cliche song, but Jesus take the wheel, right? So God, lead us. Drive us where we need to go. But he gives us the free will whether we're going to accept that guidance or not. Lead us. Especially, God, don't lead us into temptation. Well, right then and there, we know that God doesn't lead us into temptation. But when we think God lead us, we understand we are steering away from all kinds of temptation. And deliver us from evil. Matthew says, deliver us from the evil one. That means, God, we are seeking your salvation, your redemption for us to know it here and now. As you lead us, God, you're steering us away from things and places we don't need to go to or be a part of. At the same time, God, we're asking you to lead us so we can experience your salvation, your love, your eternal presence here and now. And be the people that you are asking us to be. To live this life. To help work with you to transform it into the kingdom of heaven. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us, not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Now we get to the best part. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now, why does the prayer end this way? It's, it's not in Scripture. The prayer ends, notice, with, a, with, with adoration and praise to God at the beginning. And the other bookend is praising God here at the end because we're saying that, God, all of this is yours. For yours is the kingdom. This is everything here on earth and in heaven. Yours is the power. God, we are seeking your presence, your glory. Everything good is because of you in this life. We get to live and dwell with your power and the glory. Everything we do, we should still give praise to God forever and ever. That's how Jesus says to pray. Just like we say some type of creed, usually the Apostles' Creed. This time we've been doing the, the Nicene Creed. It's easy to get in a place of just saying it and not really thinking about it. Next week when we do communion, we'll do liturgy. Oftentimes what happens is that's a, that's a time where people can kind of zone out because they know the words that are coming. But each word comes from Scripture. And when we think about each word and realize what it is that we're praying, especially in the Lord's Prayer, everything takes on a whole new meaning. It's not just something that we do. It's not just something that, that we say we know, but it becomes new and alive to us each and every single time we read it, each and every single time we pray it. Even if you have the habit of praying three to four times a day, the Lord's Prayer. But when our hearts are in constant communion and fellowship and communication with God, it is amazing how we will see his work and will being done. As someone once said, if you only pray when you're in trouble, you're in trouble. And Jesus is saying, pray to this personal God who is so far above everything that we can even imagine. It's called transcendence. Who is, uh, who, who, whose name is to be revered. Who will give us what we need. Who will forgive us as we forgive the other people. Who will lead us, steering us all clear from temptation if we allow it, if we allow them to. Who will deliver us from the evil one. Because his is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever. And all the church said, Amen. Amen. Let's pray. And let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. And this time, think we're going to pause after each line and let's think about what that means. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil with enthusiasm. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever.